Chauncey Billups really might be the most underrated player in the history of the NBA. It truly is amazing how a player can accomplish what he accomplished in his career, coming where he came from, the route that he had to take, but yet he is never brought up in discussions that I think at the bare minimum he deserves consideration for. And in today's video, I'm going to break down the career of Chauncey Billups and why I believe he is so underrated not only in the basketball world, but in the sports world in general. But before we get started, if you are not subscribed, make sure you join the family and hit that subscribe button and bell for post notifications. And if you enjoyed these career deep dives, let me know by pressing pressing that like button and commenting down below, it would really help me out a lot. But without further ado, let's take things back to the beginning of Chauncey Billups' career, coming out of Colorado and being the third overall pick in the NBA draft of 1997. Chauncey was seen as one of the better players in his draft class, a class that included Mark Jackson, Steven Jackson, Tracy McGrady, and even Tim Duncan with the first overall pick. Being seen as a very good defender, a three-point shooter, a solid playmaker, averaging 19 points a game, shooting over 40% from three. What was not to like about him coming into the league, which is obviously why he was drafted third overall. But unfortunately, even though the Celtics sucked, him and the coach Rick Pitino, who was also the executive at the time, him and Chauncey didn't mesh very well due to reasons unknown. You would think if you take a guy with the third overall pick at a position that you're pretty much lacking at the time, your team is pretty trash, that you would give him the opportunity to showcase what he could do especially considering whenever he played, he showed up and showed out and even on most occasions exceeded expectations. Hell, in the month of December of his rookie year, the man shot 49% from three. The Celtics truly did not know what to do with him to the point that they didn't know if he was a point guard or a shooting guard. I mean, think about it. Even though the man is 6'3", let's try him out at the two guard and see if that works out for him, even though we drafted him as a point guard. The situation got so bad that after 51 games of his rookie year, he was traded to the Toronto Raptors at the trading deadline. Years down the line, he was asked about his time in Boston and he said, and I quote, that didn't help. They didn't give me the chance to really slow down and listen to myself, listen to the game and what's going on. I never really had the chance. It was a recipe for disaster there. And he's right, because the fact that they didn't even give him a full season as a starter is insane to me. But then you move on to his time in Toronto, and it truly doesn't get any better, if I'm being quite honest. Because though he didn't play that well, shooting below 35% from the field and 32% from three, after only playing 29 games at the ending of his rookie year, Year with the Toronto Raptors, he was then traded again to another team being the Denver Nuggets in a three-way deal involving the Minnesota Timberwolves as well. So this now marks him being on three different teams in the span of two seasons. This is some D-Lo-esque shit right here. And I wish that I could say things got better for him, but unfortunately it still goes downhill from here. As in his first year with the Nuggets, he only played 45 games due to being traded later on in the season. But in his second year with the Nuggets, he suffered a shoulder injury that kept him out for the remainder of the season. And unfortunately, this is the NBA. It's a business. The Nuggets traded him again. He was moved to the Orlando Magic and ironically didn't even play a single game for them despite being in the season team photo. Around the NBA world at the time, people viewed Chauncey Billups as a bust. Let's not forget, he was the third overall pick. It got to the point that the Magic didn't even bother to bring him back after his rookie contract contract expired. He would then sign with the Minnesota Timberwolves alongside Kevin Garnett and then point guard Terrell Brandon. Originally, the plan was for him to be the backup point guard and that's what he did. A great shooter and defender that could relieve Terrell Brandon whenever he went to the bench of his ball handling duties and do a pretty good job while doing so. But at the end of the season of 2002, Terrell Brandon actually suffered a major knee injury and Chauncey Billups stepped in as the starter to close out the year in the last 34 games. Chauncey exceeded a lot of people's expectations, averaging nearly 15 points a game, 7 assists, 3 rebounds and a steal, shooting 41% from the field, 39% from 3 on 4 attempts, and 89% at the free throw line. The Timberwolves would finish off the season winning 50 games, finishing top 5 in offensive rating and points per game. And though they did get swept in the first round against the Dallas Mavericks that year, Chauncey was excluded from all of the blame in that series as he more than exceeded expectations, averaging 20 points a game, 6 assists, 
assist, five rebounds, one steal, shooting 45% from the field, 40% from three on five attempts a game, and 70% at the free throw line. Chauncey was so excellent in the stretch after Terrell Brandon got injured in the 2002 season and in the playoffs against the Mavericks to the point that many people considered it a breakout season. And though he made it known to the Timberwolves that he wanted to return and to the media, the Timberwolves decided to stick it out with Terrell Brandon as their starting point guard despite his injuries. Now, obviously, despite KG winning an MVP in 2004 and then making the Western Conference Finals that season, we all know how that story ended. And I truly do believe Chauncey staying in Minnesota is one of the more underrated what ifs in NBA history. But after the Timberwolves made it clear that they were not going to bring him back, he would sign a five year, $35 million deal with the Detroit Pistons that offseason. And immediately, once he touched down in Detroit, he was hailed as a fan favorite in that city. As the Pistons were consistently contenders in the Eastern Conference, making conference finals appearances essentially every single year, as Chauncey was a consistent 16 to 18 point per game scorer, a great playmaker, an amazing shooter, especially for his time, shooting over 40% in multiple years with the Pistons, a great playmaker and decision maker. And as a defender, these were the years that he peaked on that side of the ball, even making multiple defensive teams in the process. Throughout his time in Detroit, he would make the all-star team five times. He made three all-NBA teams, which includes a second team selection and two third team selections. And he would make back-to-back -back second team all-defense in 2005 and 2006. And what's so amazing about his time in Detroit is that the Pistons were not hailed for their offensive firepower in the 2000s. It was actually quite the opposite. It was their defensive firepower. As contributions from not only Chauncey Billups, but Ben Wallace, Rashid Wallace, Tayshawn Prince, Rip Hamilton, and many others made this team arguably the greatest defensive unit of all time. And this was not some random Eastern Conference team that was a second round out while he was there. No, it was quite the opposite actually. This team made multiple conference finals in a row, six to be exact, and hasn't gone back there since he left. But the cherry on top of his career in Detroit, we all know is the 2004 NBA Finals. As the Pistons headed into that series against the Shaq and Kobe Lakers that had Gary Payton and Karl Malone, the alleged super team of that season, were heavy underdogs and pulled off a five game gentleman sweep against the Lakers. As many people regard that 2004 Finals as the biggest upset in NBA history and Chauncey Billups was easily the best player on the court in that series. As he not only contributed to the defense that forced Kobe Bryant to shoot 38% from the field and 17% from three, but along with his defense, he averaged 21 points, five assists, a steal and a half, three rebounds, shooting 51% from the field, 47% from three, 93% at the free throw line, which accumulates to a true shooting percentage just short of 70%. It truly is one of the most underrated finals performances of all time because this team was not some flashy offensive juggernaut. They were quite the opposite. They were a defensively sound unit that was able to cause problems for even the most generational offensive players. And for his efforts against the Lakers in the 2004 finals, he was awarded with the finals MVP along with with his one and only championship. But it doesn't just stop there as the Pistons, even though they didn't win another title throughout the remainder of their tenure with Chauncey, Ben Wallace, and Rip Hamilton's trio, they were still able to make it back to the NBA Finals the next year against the San Antonio Spurs. And had it not been for the heroics of Robert Ory in game seven, there's a good chance the Pistons go back to back. Now I wish I could say this story ends with Chauncey retiring in Detroit, but unfortunately I can't say that. As unfortunately due to Ben Wallace, Wallace leaving them, the Pistons truly were never the same as they never made it back to the NBA Finals. They were still a powerhouse in the Eastern Conference, but with players like LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and the conference getting a lot tougher than it was in the earlier 2000s, the Pistons decided to move on from Chauncey Billups as they traded him back to Denver in exchange for Allen Iverson. And after a pretty underrated year in Denver that you could argue is the best regular season of his career, averaging 20.6 assists on 42-39 and 91 shooting splits, which led to them making their only Western Conference Finals appearance in the Mellow era, which by the way, Chauncey was their best player that year, not Carmelo Anthony. He then got traded to the Knicks at the deadline of 2011 with Carmelo Anthony, then later went to the Clippers when Chris Paul went there because he wanted to be on a contending team, then went back to Detroit at the end of his career to wrap things up. So as you can see, Chauncey's career, despite being filled with twists and turns to start things off, quickly became one of the best success 
best stories in NBA history in my personal opinion. The man was tossed around from team to team like he was a sack of trash. They labeled him a bust because the Magic didn't want to bring him back after he suffered an injury. He was on four different teams in the span of his first four years in the NBA. And the moment he got his first real opportunity in Minnesota, he knocked it out the park and they still let him walk in free agency to Detroit. But once he got that first real opportunity from beginning to the end of the season with the Detroit Pistons in 2003, he helped lead them to six consecutive Eastern Conference Finals appearances, two NBA Finals appearances back-to-back -back in 2004 and 2005, made multiple All-Star teams, All-NBA teams, and All-Defensive teams, and became an NBA Finals MVP. But yet, despite all of those accolades and actually being the only player with a winning record against Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James, he wasn't named to the NBA's top 75 players of all time. And even if you don't think he deserves to be on that list, he at least deserves to be a hard Hall of Famer, which he is not. So when you talk about the truly underrated players in NBA history, Chauncey Billups has to be number one on the list for me. And I just hope that he makes the Hall of Fame and it doesn't take him passing away one day for them to remember to put him in. By the way, big ups to Chauncey for getting that head coaching job with the Blazers. He's doing a pretty good job with Anthony Simons right now as we speak. But you guys let me know your opinions down below in the comments section on Chauncey Billups' career. Do you believe he is the most underrated player of all time why or why not this is your boy young muster signing out you guys stay safe and have a blessed day peace